So uh, we've got the uh, title Networks and, and uh, Calibration. So what we're going to do is run through a few slides and then we're going to uh, give you a chance to kind of do some work on tables. We'll then kind of um, have another couple of slides and then a bit more table work because really in some respects uh, we can kind of give you some ideas but it's, it's very much your discussions which I think are going to be uh, important. So, Next slide, then. Just. Oh. I usually do my slides the night before, so I know what the next one is, but I next to last week. So the, just to think through, the responsible officer is, is a very new sort of role. So a number of you have been medical directors for a period of time. Some of you are new to this. But it's, it's, a, it's a different sort of role. Um, it's challenging. And part of the challenge is, to be honest with you, is that sometimes your executive members on the board don't get it. Okay? So it's a challenging role. Um, and what we found was, at our region, and it would be interesting to hear what other regions might have found as well, is that we had a 20% turnover of our responsible officers last year. So we had 20% um, came new, uh, um, had new, became new in, in last year, okay? And we didn't really anticipate that sort of turnover. Um, there was a document that came out recently, which um, if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to have a look at it. It was, it was done by Monitor and the TDA. And it describes the challenges of the hospital medical directors. Um, it's on the Monitor website. Um, very readable. And they talked about, those medical directors working in acute trust talked about their concerns being around quality, medical management, and leadership. And this is a kind of thought cloud about the sort of things that medical directors and acute trust want. And in particular, let's see if this is going to work, um, they want a network, they want support, they want to have a, a that peer-to-peer, -peer, they want coaching, they want meetings, they want to be meeting together to understand how they can do their job better, particularly with regard to quality, uh, medical management and leadership. As ROs, you're all already aware of your responsibilities um, to assure everybody has a yearly appraisal, a quality assured one, make sure that uh, you're making recommendations about revalidation, pre-employment checks, but the really, really important piece, which everybody um, sometimes forgets, is that you have the duty as the responsible officer to monitor the conduct and performance of, of all your medical staff. And then to respond appropriately to those concerns. That big quality issue. So in many respects, the concerns that were raised by the medical directors around quality, leadership and medical um, uh, performance are all in fact the responsible officer roles. Just to let you know that those of us who work at regional level, um, we also have a, a responsibility uh, around revalidation, in particular looking at um, you as designated bodies, and we have this independent verification process that's um, being developed, responding to concerns that may be raised about you as responsible officers, which is interesting. Um, and so there we have a slightly different relationship between region now um, so the level two ROs have a, a, a kind of uh, that supporting relationship, but nevertheless overseeing uh, the development and delivery of your responsible officer roles uh, within your designated body. So with all those, how are you, gonna, how are you doing that? Because that's quite a big piece of work, and if you've got 20% of you turning over every year, a lot of you are new to uh, the role, uh, you'll come into it, it will be in various stages of development, or you may become a medical director in a new trust or elsewhere, in a new um, independent organisation. How are you going to deliver all of this? Um, what's quality assured appraisal? I've seen some appraisals where the typical outputs are um, the doctor's going to go on this particular course and he'd like to have some more time to do uh, a new procedure. That is not quality assured appraisal. How are you going to link it to your organisational goals, for example? We heard this morning about the fact that if you, you can link it to your organisational goals. 
good organisations often use a, a pre-printed PDP, so in fact organisational goals are included in that PDP each year. At least mention the word patient. Uh, what's an appropriate response? And that, was, that came up earlier this morning. What happens if you don't recommend the doctor? And that's interesting because I actually had a, an email last week from a doctor complaining he hadn't been recommended, recommended for his revalidation. I'm not a court of appeal. So, and so what are you? Are you, are you a hawk or a dove? Do you know? And this is, in some respects, um, we need to kind of make sure that doctors do feel they're getting a good deal and, it's, and it's, we're even-handed. But you need to make sure that you feel you're, in the, that you're <coughs> acting appropriately and proportionately as well. So what are the thresholds? What levers can you use when doctors perhaps stray off track? What works well? Because some of you have that already, and we need to make sure that all of you have that. And this is what those RO networks, we would hope, would be able to offer. And in some respects, we need to understand from you in a minute, is that truly the case? So, so for you as responsible officers, is it giving you that peer support, that training? Um, can you bring your difficult cases there? All right, I think that's right. I've got to this one. It's James's turn. Uh, thank you, David. Um, hello, my name's James Kinn. Um, so, what, NHS England spends around a quarter of a million pounds a year on appraisal and RO networks and as you uh, well know you're, you, are, you have to attend. Uh, we have set up a template which we think fulfills your needs, or we hope fulfills your needs, but the, now is an opportunity for you to do a little bit of group working to tell us, give us some feedback about what works and what doesn't work in your network meetings. Now I'm very cognizant of the fact that we have people from all over the country here and the networks, although they run to a template, they do run slightly differently in, in different areas. So some of the issues that, I, that <coughs> I'd like you to think about, but then you, you may have other issues you wish to feed back, are the size of the meeting. In London, for instance, they have one big meeting, so it's quite a lot of people. In other areas, we have smaller geographical meetings, smaller numbers of people, 20 to 40 typically, in the Midlands and East. Um, the membership of the meeting, should it just be ROs and possibly their deputies, or do you feel that managers having managers in the meeting with you is helpful or not so helpful? Most <coughs> regions have four meetings a year, uh, and Midlands and East actually has three at the moment, plus this conference which we uh, count as making up our fourth. Is that the right frequency for you? Is that working? Does that give you enough uh, time to, to think about problems? Is it, uh, is it, is it the right opportunity? Networking, how important is that for you at the meetings? Do you want some time set aside, lunch time and a tea break to do that? Uh, is that helpful or would you just rather come, get the meeting done and clear off back to your, your organisations and, and carry on with all your uh, work? Um, NHS England and, and the GMC ELAs usually give you an update at those meetings. How helpful are they? What would you like from them? Are there things that we can do better, um, like being shorter or longer uh, and more detail or less? Um, I think most networks give you an email um, update afterwards. Is that helpful? Would you like more email uh, communication from us or, uh, um, or, or less? Do you find the large <coughs> plenary discussions helpful or is, it, uh, is our group working, group, small group working, is that better for you? Um, and uh, in the Midlands and East, we've, we've employed a, a, a professional facilitator, Steve Wilkinson from the University of, of East Anglia, to run some of our sessions now. Uh, is that something which I think you, you think has been, is, is been helpful or, or not so helpful? So that's just a, a few ideas, and you may have others. What I'd like you to do is to work on your tables. If you would uh, uh, start by electing um, a spokesperson for your table, uh, we'll give you about 10 minutes to discuss that, uh, those issues. At the end of that, I'd like you to come up with probably a, a two positive points and maybe two areas for improvement uh, from, 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 from your discussion. And then we'll collect those up uh, in a plenary session and uh, we will write those down and we'll, and we'll have those for, for, uh, for uh, formal feedback to uh, our re-evaluation um, uh, network meeting later.